श्री बावरी आलोक प्रवेश नीरा जरी वो तो जी
ನವೀನ ನೀರಧ ರೂಪ ಮನೋಹರ ಮೋಹನ ಬಂಚಿ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಕಂಸ ನಿಶೂಧನ ನಿಕುಂಜ ರಾಸ ವಿಲಾಸಿ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಕಂಸ ನಿಶೂಧನ ನಿಖುಂಜ ರಾಸ ವಿಲಾಸಿ ಕಾದಂಬ ಖಾನನ ರಸ ಪರಾಯನ ವೃಂದ ವಿಪಿನ ನಿಭಾಸಿ ಕಾದಂಬ ಖಾನನ ರಾಸ ಪರಾಯನ ವೃಂದ ವಿಪಿನ ನಿಭಾಸಿ ಆನಂದ ವಾರ್ಧನ ಪ್ರೇಮ ನಿಕೇತನ ಪುಲಶರ ಯೋಜ ಕಾಮ ಆನಂದ ವಾರ್ಧನ ಪ್ರೇಮ ನಿಕೇತನ ಪುಲಶರ ಯೋಜ ಕೋಪಂಗ ನಾಗ ಚಿತ್ತ ವಿನೋದನ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಗುಣ ಘನ ಗಾಮ ಗೋಪಂಗ ನಾಗನ ಚಿತ್ತ ವಿನೋದನ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಗುಣ ಘನ ಗಾಮ ಯಾಮುನ ಜೀವನ ಕೇಳಿ ಪರಾಯನ ಮನಸ ಚಂದ್ರ ಚಕೋರ ಯಾಮುನ ಜೀವನ ಕೇಳಿ ಪರಾಯನ ಮನಸ ಚಂದ್ರ ಚಕೋರ ನಮಶುರಸ್ ಗೋ ಕೃಷ್ಣಯಾಶ್ ರಾಕೋ ವಚನ ಮನ ಮೋರ ನಮ ಶುರಸ್ ಗೋ ಕೃಷ್ಣಯಾಶ್ ರಾಕೋ ವಚನ ಮನ ಮೋರ ದೀಪಾವರಿ ಶೇಷ ಅಲೋಕ ಪ್ರೋಷ ನಿದ್ರಚರಿಯೋತ ಜೀವ ದೀಪ 
Vavari Shesha Haloka Provesha Nidra Chariyo Tachiva Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Morari Rama Krishna Hayakri Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Morari Rama Krishna Hayakri Nidai Gaur Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nidai Gaur Hari Bo Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Shri Prabhupada Ki Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashunyavadi Paschacha Desh Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayat Nasta Praesu Vabhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 1, The Activities of Maharaj Priyavrata, Text Number 40. Bhusam Stanam Kritam Yena Bhusam Stanam Kritam Yena Sarad Giri Vanadibi Shimacha Bhuta Nivrityai Dvipe Dvipe Vibhagasha Bhusam Stanam Kritam Yena Sarad Giri Vanadibi Simacha Bhuta Nivrityai Dvipe Dvipe Vibhagasaha Bhusam Stanam Kritam Yena Sarad Giri Vanadibi Simacha Bhuta Nivrityai Dvipe Dvipe Vibhagasaha Bhusamsthanam Kritam Yena 
Marriages. Take, take to Krishna consciousness. 
for they cannot achieve higher standard while absorbed in the bodily concept of life. Maharaja Priyakrita divided the surface of the globe into different islands so that each class of men would live peacefully, not gradually, with the others. The modern idea of nationhood has gradually developed from the divisions made by Maharaja Priyakrita. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanon Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we can understand from the verse, the verse today that quarreling between different people is not a new thing. But even long ago, in the times of Maharaj Priyavrat, which was actually Satya Yuga, that there was differences. There were some differences between people. And so Maharaj Priyavrata wanted to stop the quarreling. Quarreling, of course, is one of the symptoms of the age of Kali. Srila Vyasadev describes how the people in the Kali Yuga have special characteristics. Prayena payusha sabdya kalo vasmin yugejana Manda Sumanda Matayo Manda Bhagyahi Upadrutaha. That in the Kali Yuga we have a short life. And in addition to the short life, we are also known to be lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. We are always disturbed, and because we are always disturbed, we quarrel with each other and we argue with each other. And it's a, it, we generally understand this to be due to the influence of the personality of Kali. That personality of Kali who was found by Maharaj Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit was ruling the world and he was touring the world and he happened to see a person dressed like a king with a crown on his head but he could understand the person was a sudra. So Maharaj, Parik Maharaj Parikshit saw this person also had a sword in his hand and he was standing there in front of a cow who had tears in her eyes and a bull was standing on only a portion of one leg. So Maharaj Parikshit was shocked to see such a scene and he was ready to immediately kill the personality of Kali. But because Kali took advantage of the, of the uh, Kshatriya nature of Maharaj Parikshit, he surrendered himself to Maharaj Parikshit. So Maharaj Parikshit initially told him that he could reside only where there is intoxication, gambling, meat-eating and illicit sex. But the personality of Kali appealed that he said, there's nowhere like that in your kingdom. Because in your kingdom everyone is following the religious principles. So then Maharaj Parikshit then compromised and said, then you can remain where there is hoarding of gold. Because where there is hoarding of gold, then certainly these things will come. And so this was what happened, and this allowed the personality of Kali to infiltrate 
into the, the world and spread his influence. And his influence is that people will quarrel and argue over insignificant things. We say, we make a, a molehill into a mountain. <laughs> a molehill is a tiny little hill, but we'll make it into a mountain. In, in other words, we quarrel and argue over very insignificant things very insignificant thing and we see even today these kind of things go on one nation claims this 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 mountain belongs to our country and another country said no it belongs to our nation <laughs> some years ago there was a war fought between britain and argentina and they fought about islands which were called the Falkland Islands and they were practically uninhabited. <laughs> they were completely useless islands but, and, uh, and they were just off the coast of Argentine. So Argentine at one point claimed them and the B Margaret Thatcher was the Prime Minister at the time and she made war against Argentine. And it cost them millions of pounds, millions of pounds, and many lives also to fight this stupid war. That's only one case, and it goes on continually. You've got China and India fighting also about some very remote region in the Himalayas. And they will say, this is our land. And they'll say, no, this is our. And they'll make, they'll fight with each other. And people will die for useless land, which is uninhabitable practically. But they, they claim for their own country. And we see, when they, when they say that, they say the Americans went to the moon and what was the first thing they did when they landed? He put his flag, put the American flag there. It's so stupid, claiming this planet now belongs to America. <laughs> and what can they do? They cannot go there. They cannot do anything with it. But this is all going on in the name of the bodily conception of life. We are thinking, my country, my land, this belongs to us, this is mine. And so we make distinction, we make division. Somebody is black and somebody is white and we make distinction. So at one time uh, there, were some, uh, there were some black Americans staying in the temple in New York in Srila Prabhupada's time. And they went, one of them at least went to see Srila Prabhupada to complain. He said, people are prejudiced against me because my skin is black. And Prabhupada said to him, he said, he said that is your ignorance. If, he said, if, if people insult you, he said, they're ignorant. But if you feel insulted by them, that is your ignorance because you're not black and you're not white. You are a spirit soul. So we have to come out of the bodily conception of life to understand our spiritual identity. Just as Srila Prabhupada taught us, we're not young and we're not old. We're eternal spirit souls. So this ignorance, of course, is very prevailing throughout the world. And because of this ignorance of the bodily conception, people fight and quarrel with each other and argue over little things. So even in the Satya Yuga, you have Priyavrata understanding this problem and therefore he, he, he thought, he had a, his thinking was to resolve the problem. So he made boundaries. 
just as it described here, mountains, different mountains and rivers and so on and forests. He made these boundaries, one nation and another nation. But of course that only some ways it only increases the <laughs> agitation. Uh, because one nation, they want to control, they want to expand their empire. They're thinking to always expand their power. They're not satisfied to have their power, just simply their own country and just to develop it. But they think how to expand it. And they, they will claim different parts of the ocean. This is Jap Japanese ocean. This is Filipino ocean. This water belongs to the Philippines. And similarly, airspace. This is Russian airspace. And some time back, they shot down, the Russians shot down a, an Air Korea civilian airplane carrying like 300 people. A domestic, it, it was a, just simply a a civilian airplane flying people to another country and if somehow it flew over Russia and the Russians sent airplanes and shot it down. So these kind of things go on in the world today. Every now and again you get these, car, these sort of terrible, horrible things going on in the name of defending what is ours. Right, this is mine. You see the example also, Dhruva Maharaj, again, Satya Yuga. When Dhruva Maharaj's brother, Uttam, had, be, had gone into the forest, somehow he was killed by a yaksha. And Dhruva Maharaj then made war against the yakshas. And there was a great, fat, a great battle took place between Dhruva Maharaj and the Yakshas. And the, and the Yakshas all had, they had mystic power and they were using their mystic power to fight Dhruva Maharaj. So it was really, there's really a ferocious battle and it's described there in Srimad Bhagavatam. And it wasn't until uh, Swayambhuvamanu came and spoke to Dhruva Maharaj and told him that this is not proper, that this kind of violence is not befitting someone like you. And Swayambhuva Manu reminded him that as a young boy he had gone to the forest and he took shelter of the Supreme Lord. But now he is killing so many living entities who are all parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. So Swayambhuvamanu also told him that the Yakshas are all under the rule of Kuvera. Kuvera is the king of the Yakshas. And he told him Kuvera is very aggrieved, he's very disturbed that you're killing so many of his uh, uh, citizens who are under his control. And so the Dhruva Maharaj understood, he came to his senses, well, he, he, anyway, I won't come to his senses, but he understood that he had done enough killing. Manu pointed out to him, he said, your brother was killed by one yaksha, but you have killed thousands of yakshas. You have made war on the yakshas, you have killed thousands of them just in retaliation for the loss of your one brother. It was one person who killed your brother, but you're killing so many of them. So in this way Dhruva Maharaj understood that it was time for him to stop all this violence. And then Kuvera came to see Dhruva Maharaj and he thanked Dhruva Maharaj for giving up his violence. And Kuvera offered a blessing to Dhruva Maharaj. It's an interesting point in Srimad Bhagavatam because usually we don't worship or we don't take benedictions from demigods. But you can take blessings 
in Krishna consciousness. And so Dhruva Maharaj, he asked Kuvera that please give me remembrance of the pastimes of the Lord. Let me always be engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord. And so Kuvera was happy to give that kind of benediction to Dhruva Maharaj. And you see the gopis also, the gopis they worship Katyayani and they got blessings from Katyayani. They wanted to get Krishna for their husband. And so you can worship the demigods in Krishna consciousness for our Krishna conscious activities. Another example of people who worship demigods was Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj would do sacrifices and in the course of his sacrifices he would offer to the different demigods. But he was understanding each of these different demigods a limbs of the body of the Supreme Lord. Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai. So the demigods are all different limbs of the body of the Supreme Lord. Just like Lord Brahma, he represents intelligence. Indra rep represents one of the limbs like the arm of the Lord. Uh, we have also Chandra, the moon, represents the mind. And Surya, the sun. So each and everything in the universe is related to the Supreme Lord. We see everything in relation to the Lord Krishna. So we, one who is in Krishna consciousness will not go to war. He will not take part in that kind of violence. How was it that Dhruva Maharaj got involved in so much violence against the young? Well, because he was a king, he was a Kshatriya, he was in charge of his kingdom and he felt it was necessary. He felt that they killed my brother, if I don't take action against them, in the future more people will be killed. I heard a story, there was one, devo one devotee was telling me how he was in the Middle, in the middle East and there, there was this one big big westerner man and he had an argument with this one Pakistani guy <laughs> you know and they had an argument and this Pakistani guy got really angry he started shouting and everything and so the the big westerner guy just hit him and, and knocked him down you know and and so the the Pakist they got the police and, and he said, to the, why, why did you hit him? He said, well, he was shouting at me. And he said, where I come from, if people shout at you, the next thing they're going to do is hit you. So he said, I hit him before he hit me. <laughs> and so the, the policeman said, oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So that's the kind, some people think like that. You know, you, if somebody starts shouting at you too much, you know, you just hit him, then they keep quiet, you know. So, taking action, violence, usually of course as devotees we try to avoid that. We don't, we're not violent people. We're, rather we want to cultivate ahimsa. Ahimsa is the quality of the mode of goodness, non-violent. We're not Buddhists. For the Buddhists, ahimsa is the highest principle of religion. But it's not, it, for us, Ahimsa is a sub-religious sub principle. It's not the ultimate principle of religion. The ultimate principle of religion is Prem Punartu Mahan, to develop love of God and surrender to Krishna. That's the ultimate principle of religion for devotees. But anyway, we do want to avoid uh, this kind of agitation and disturbance which all comes due to the bodily concept of life. And now, of course, you can see with the, the, the modern age and jet travel that people are so much mixed up. You have so many different races everywhere. There were, I was in the Middle East and there was one man told me, he said, in his school 
they have 150 different nationalities. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? 100, 152, I think he said. <laughs> different nationalities in one institution, educational institution. And so this is how the world is becoming, you know, everywhere is mix, people are mixing everywhere. You, we don't have it, it's not like in the past, you know, that oh people, that this people from that land, they're the Chinese and they've got the narrow eyes and like that, you know. And people from Africa, you know, they've got the curly hair and the little curly nose and, you know, and different features in different parts of the world, you know, it, but now everybody's mixed up. It's totally cosmopolitan everywhere, you know. You look at different countries everywhere you go, you don't know, you know, who are the natives, you know. <laughs> everybody, you know, the, you know, everybody's here, you know, you got everybody everywhere. It's all mixed up. So, everybody has to come out of the bodily concept of life. And we have to realize this body is just simply the dress. It's just sim as we, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Vashamsi Jarnani Yahyata Vihaya Navani Grinati Taroparani Tatashari Rani Vihaya Jarnani Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi. Just like a person gives up one dress and takes a new dress. In the same way we give up one body and we take a new body. So we don't discriminate against people on the basis of their human body. Of course, we, we, at the same time we know not everyone is equal. There are differences. I mean, it's just madness to think everybody's equally. On the physical, material platform we're not equal. But on the spiritual platform, we're equal. We're all spiritual beings, we're all spirit souls. And we're thinking one person superior to another, that is just simply the bodily conception of life, basing everything on the material considerations. One person is educated, somebody is not. One person is very strong, another person is weak. Someone is rich, someone is poor. People are not equal. Yes, materially. But these things are very temporary. These kind of designations change very quickly. The material body. You may be very good looking as a young woman. But then after you get married and have several children and you know you get old you look a bit quite a bit different you know you change a lot and similarly the men also when you're young you have nice hair a head of hair and black hair and everything but as you get old the hair goes gray and falls out and everything you know the body changes thank goodness we're not the body we want to come out of that conception of thinking we're the body. And we have to come to Krishna consciousness. So on the platform of Krishna consciousness, we see all living entities equally. As we were discussing last night, seeing all living entities equally. We have to understand this point very clearly. And we have to apply it into our own life. This is our duty as devotees. Seeing all living entities. I was telling last night about St. Francis, how he would say, my dear sister flower and brother tree, like that. Prabhupada said, oh, that is real God consciousness. So we want, we want to develop that kind of consciousness, to see everyone as a spiritual being and to honor every living entity as a spirit soul. We give respects to all species of life. At the same time, the bodies are different. People may say, oh, if you're equal, why don't you let the dogs in the temple? 
No, 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 that, that's not practical, right? We have to have some uh, standards there. And so the dogs, we give them prasada, we're not against giving them Krishna consciousness. They can also follow the devotees. And did Shivananda Singh give mercy to a dog? And he, the dog was liberated. So at the same time, we don't bring dogs in the temple. And you don't sleep with the dog and, and you don't eat with the dog, you know. But at the same time, you can give dogs prasada. And we don't need to give them meat. They can eat prasada. You just have to give them prasadam and they will eat. There are many dogs in the dams and they all eat prasadam. <laughs> so we have to understand how to apply the Krishna conscious philosophy in a way in which it's practical, in a way in which we can all live together and work together. Just like uh, devotee said, one astrologer said about Srila Prabhupada, Oh, this man, he can build a house in which the whole world can live. So, that is the idea. A house in which the whole world can live. In other words, we live together cooperatively and in harmony with each other. What some devotees in USA, they're doing some new preaching and he, they wanted to uh, have a name for their center. So they thought if we call it Hare Krishna, that, you know, that they won't, you know, people may not like it so much. They called themselves Harmony House. <laughs> Harmony House, you know. And, but uh, the idea is it's a Krishna conscious center, but promote harmony. People, are, you know, they have that mood, we want peace, we want harmony, we should be in harmony with each other. Okay, you know, come, come on, come, come, chant Hare Krishna, eat prasana. Perfect harmony in Krishna consciousness. So we have to, we have to be a little innovative, we have to think how to reach people, how to reach out to more people. And sometimes you have to do things like that. And so it was an innovative idea and, and they have some success. They attracted people. Any question, comment? Singeshwara Prabhu? Anything? Yes Prabhu. Dwarkadish Prabhu. In Kali Yuga, Maya is influencing all living beings, animals, humans, and all this. But at the same time, to overcome the Maya's influence, to work properly, Krishna has given knowledge, especially for the human platforms. And yet, people are still becoming slaves to Maya. So, what is the reason for that? Well, the reason is people are not taking advantage of the knowledge. Although you say Krishna has given this knowledge, not everyone is aware of it. Just like although there are schools and universities, not everyone goes there. Not everyone wants education, or even they go there to, to, to be educated. They don't really want education. They're just there because they have to be there. They're forced to go there. One of the, uh, I think it was Kalesh Prabhu's wife, she was teaching and she told me that in the school where she was teaching, the head teacher told her, don't even try to teach them. They don't want to learn. <laughs> don't even try to teach them. Just try to keep them peaceful and happy. <laughs> but sometimes it's like that, you know, that people don't want education. Even though we're trying to educate people, the people are not open to it. They're not, not willing to hear. So the people have to be submissive. They have to be willing to hear. 
and then to try to then they then they then they have to apply the knowledge that they've heard. But this, there are different standards of people and mo there are a large number of people who are just simply mudha. Their only interest is to gratify their senses and they have no interest in hearing anything about peace and harmony. They just simply want money and sense gratification. And they're conditioned like that. So the Bhagavad Gita says, out of thousands among men, hardly one is endeavoring for perfection. Right? Manushinam sahasreshu kaschit yatati siddhaye. Very few are even endeavoring for perfection. So we have to understand the situation. Still we, we do try to reach out. We try to go out to people to try to make some propaganda and of course some t often when you do it then you get opposed oh you people oh you always make so much noise oh why are you always coming disturbing us like that it's a very challenging field to try to distribute Krishna consciousness to others because the mass of people don't want it and you even have things like atheist societies. In, in the, the, some devotees I know in uh, Canberra, in Australia, where Australian National University is. Canberra is the capital, and the ANU, Australian National University, quite a, quite a good school, good university. And they have an atheist society. And the, and the devotees, they were the devotees. They were having Krishna Yoga Club, and they were having kirtan and like that. And then the next group was the Atheist Society to come and use the society hall. You know the place where they'd have the meeting. The devotees would have their program, chanting and every. And then right after their program, then the Atheist Club would come and have their program. And the atheists would walk, come in and they'd mock and they'd, you know, be very nasty and sarcastic. So that's going on. And what to speak of atheist society, that sometimes the atheists, they even, they advertise. They put, they, there was a thing, uh, they wanted to put an advertisement about atheism on buses. You know, they had put big advertisements on the side of buses. So the, the atheist society had put some big atheistic slogan on the side of a bus. And the one bus driver refused to drive the bus. <laughs> but, but this is the kind of thing you face today in Kali Yuga. And of course, then you have uh, atheist, you have it in America, that previously they used to have prayer every day. And then some politicians said, oh, this is not good. People shouldn't be forced to pray. Let them pray on their own. If they want to pray, they can do it on their own. And they took it out of the, the whole school program. But it's, in some places, you know, it's quite good. Like uh, in the Middle East, you know, the airline, if you go, go on... Uh, Etihad, there's one airline Etihad from Abu Dhabi. And so they, they read from the Quran before they fly. You know, they, they put people into a more pious religious mood. They read out from the Quran before they fly. And even Emirates, they'll give you the different times of prayer. You know, five times to pray in the day. They'll tell you the different times when you're supposed to pray in, in the course of the flight. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> so, some way, some places, it depends where you are. Some places they're more religious and other places they're more atheistic. It, but one more thing, Maharaj, despite knowing all the problems we are facing daily, we are suffering and everything, still people don't come to understand that what is the solution we have to do 
to overcome. I'm talking practically the leaders and all this. Is it due to the Kali influence or karma influence or mandala, mind mandala uh, stupidness? Well, sometimes people won't, they won't even accept that they're suffering. You know, they, they may speak, they may complain, but they think, they think all their suffering can be ended with money. They think money can solve all their problems. That is their illusion. And that's why they're so busy working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just trying to make money and solve their economic problems and they're thinking in this way all of their suffering will be removed. So that's one, one way of thinking which people have. And some, some people, they don't, they don't really think they're suffering. They just won't, they won't admit it. The, the one, one devotee's mother came to see Prabhupada and uh, she came into the room and she's saying, Oh, it's so hot. Oh, it's so hot out there. And, oh, that's so terrible. And she sat down in front of Prabhupada and Prabhupada began to speak about suffering, about how there's so much suffering in the world. But she immediately said, Oh no, I don't think it's so bad. Not so bad. And Prabhupada, well, just a minute ago, you were suffering. You were telling me how hot it is, how it's unbearable. And, uh, anyway, anyway, you know, it's not so bad. People are like that. They don't like to admit their suffering. Even if you try to tell them their suffering, they don't like to hear it. So people have to be submissive. But they're not they're not very common these kind of people to get people who are willing to hear to be submissive it's rare yeah okay any other question this go show you Janava has a question. Well, you have to be patient and you have to wait and see that in the future they may become, they may become devotee, you know. Of course, you, do, you have to do everything you can to appeal to them. But sometimes, you know, people get put off if you try to put too much energy into them, too much effort into them to try to bring them to Krishna consciousness. Sometimes they like to just come on their own. If you're always trying to tell them to come, become Krishna conscious, they, oh, why are you always telling me what to do? They don't like it, you know, that you're always trying to push them in to do something. So anyway, you, you, you give them the chance and then you leave it to them. Now they know about Krishna consciousness, at least they know about it. It will be up to them when they actually come and take up Krishna consciousness. But you've done your part, you told them about it, you gave them a chance, so if they're going to be devotees, they can come, they know. We can't force people to come to Krishna consciousness, they have to come on their own, by their own desire. So when they're ready, you know, if they really do have good qualities, but the, the important quality is that they're, 
devotee to Krishna. What do, what do you mean when you say good qualities? What are these good qualities? They, well, they could simply be in the mode of goodness. You see, people who are in the mode of goodness, sometimes they're just so happy in the mode of goodness, they don't like to change. They don't want to become, because they're so, they're, they're already thinking, I'm a good person, I don't do anything wrong, why I need to be a devotee? They're just so comfortable in the mode of goodness. They're thinking, I know, I have knowledge, and I, I'm a good person, I don't lie, I don't steal, I don't cheat people, I don't get angry easily, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. Why I need to become devotee? So this is one of the problems, people in the mode of goodness, that sometimes it's difficult, more difficult to get people from the mode of goodness to become devotees. Because they're so comfortable, they're so happy there in their own position, and they're thinking, "I'm, I'm, I'm already good. I don't." They think, "I don't need Krishna consciousness." They're thinking like that. They believe in charity. <laughs> well, we spoke about that last night. We spoke about Maharaj Nega and how he was doing charity. He became a lizard. So, you know, that's the problem with doing charity. That this, and also, charity can be also in the mode of ignorance. And perform charity in the mode of ignorance. It's not going to help you to go to heaven. The so people are generally ignorant about these things. So we're trying to show people a better life, a, a better alternative to the material world, to their present existence. It's up to them. We want to show by our own example that you can be happy, you can be satisfied in Krishna consciousness, a better lifestyle, positive alternative. And people, gen intelligent people, they, they're looking for something alternative. They're looking for something to help them get out from this entanglement in the material world. So Krishna consciousness is that alternative. You can free yourself from the entanglement of this material energy, which gives so many troubles, so many, so much anxiety, so much stress and tension. We can get free from all of that by taking shelter in Krishna consciousness. And it's not a big change. You don't have to change your life so much. You just simply have to add Krishna. That's all you have to do. Just add Krishna into your life. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki.